Our theme this morning is light in our darkness. And our reading comes from John's Gospel, the first chapter. John writes, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. But he came... He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He answered, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, I am not. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, They had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Here ends our reading for this morning. P.D. Eastman wrote a classic children's storybook titled... Are you my mother? It's a story of a a little bird that's hatched and falls out of the nest and then goes wandering on search for its mother. And this little bird runs into all kinds of characters. Runs into a cat, a dog, a cow, an old car, an old working steam shovel in a mine. And and as the little bird encounters each one of these characters, the bird asks the question, are you my mother? And each character answers the same way, no, silly, I am not your mother. Finally, the big mechanical shovel in the mine, which the bird calls a snort, lifts that little bird back up into the nest and is reunited with its mother. It's a weird story. It's a story about identity and searching for the one who offers life. I've read that story to my children so many times, I can easily miss the message in that story. Today our gospel reading from John's gospel is a bit weird too. And it too is a story about identity and searching for a connection to the one who gives life. We may have read this story so many times that we too miss the meaning or the message in this story. John is baptizing, proclaiming that the Messiah has come as the light for the world. And like the little bird in the children's story, the religious folks are asking a similar kind of question over and over. Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you my mother? Can you hear it? Who are you, John? We are looking for the Christ. Are you the one? John responds... Like all the characters in the children's story, no, silly, I am not 
the Christ. And then he goes on and says, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Not even touch one of his sandals. John uses this image of light, saying that he is not the light. But he reflects the light of Christ by what he says and does. And those who he is baptizing reflect the light of Christ by what they say and do through repentance and forgiveness. They changed the world by, what, by the way they lived their lives. Changed lives. This time of year, we... Huh, we're looking for that perfect gift for that special someone, aren't we? It's Advent time. My children remind me just about every day, Dad, 17 more days till Christmas, 16 more days till Christmas, 15 more days till Christmas. It's time to get ready for the party. They're ready. And yet I wonder if we have somehow forgotten whose party it, it's for. Now anytime I go to a birthday party, there's always a time of gift giving. And yet I wonder if it's Jesus' birthday, then why do we get all the gifts? I wonder, what gift might we consider giving to Jesus this year? I love this time of year, don't you? I love the lights and the decorations in people's homes. I love the buzz that's in the air. I love the Christmas season, don't you? What I don't like is the hustle and bustle. Somehow the Christmas message seemed to have gotten distorted with the store messages that say, bye, bye, bye. We've been wooed into thinking there are things we've got to get for people because we just can't live without them. Christmas seems, seems to have become something it wasn't intended to be. I'll say it again. I love this time of year. I love getting gifts. I love getting gifts. But I wonder if we might just be like that little bird searching for that perfect gift for that special someone in all the wrong places. Did you hear the story about the little boy who's standing in line at the mall waiting to see Santa? And he looks around at all the people and he says to his mother, Mom, isn't Christmas the celebration of Jesus' birth? His mom says, yes, why? Boy looks at the people standing in line and says to his mom, then where's the line to see Jesus? True story. We can so easily get caught up in the hustle and bustle of this season that it destroys our joy and our happiness. So let me ask you, have you ever stopped and looked around and asked, why am I doing this? Why am I standing in this line? Why am I buying this gift or going to that party or meeting this obligation? Why, why, why? It can get pretty crazy this time of year, can it? It can make us feel like we're going crazy, doesn't it? What's supposed to be a season of happiness, happy holidays, and merriment, Merry Christmas can end up being a season of exhaustion and frustration and dare I say depression. Instead of a season of light and joy and happiness for many people, it becomes a season of deep darkness. 
How might we change that this year? When John was asked, are you the one? He said, no, silly, I am not the Christ. And then he went on to say, he is the light of the world, pointing to Jesus. How might we point others to Jesus? How might we give Jesus the greatest gift possible this year? It's His birthday. He deserves the gifts. So here's a Christmas riddle for you. What gift can you give Jesus that won't cost you anything, but will cost you everything? What gift can you give Jesus this year that won't cost you anything, but will cost you everything? Yourself. Let Him guide your life this year. Let Him guide your thought, your word, your deed this year. Let Him live through you. The message we hear from John is this. The light has come into the world for you and for me. We are set free from sin and death and the devil. We are empowered to live by the light of God's grace and love that is ours in Christ Jesus. How might we share the light of Christ with others and make this world a brighter place? In an article in Newsweek not too long ago, they, they did an article, maybe you read it, it was titled, The Fall of the Dinosaurs. They explored the downfall of corporate giants like General Motors, IBM, and Sears. The first paragraph included this sentence. The institutions of family, church, and government have long since lost their luster. If that's true, then no wonder the world feels like a dark place. On February 4th, 1993, officials at the Flight Control Center in Moscow announced the successful deployment of a space reflector. Did you hear about this? They developed this aluminum covered disc that they put out into space at the Mir Space Center. And the cosmonauts were able to reflect the sun to the dark side of the earth. And they were able to produce a circle of light on the earth two miles across. The Russians at that time were leading the way for reflective technology. If the church has lost its luster, maybe it's because we think we're supposed to produce the light, but instead we're to reflect the light. So how might we become better reflectors of God's love and grace in the dark world? How might we lead the way to be reflective theology of God's light in the world shining out from this place called Myerstown? I have two suggestions. First, we all need to admit that we're not the Son. We're not the Christ. Not one of us died on a cross. And it's silly for us to think or act otherwise. And yet many of us 
Many of us make the church about us. It's not about us. It's about Christ. It's about Christ's love and grace that's been poured out for us in this place. And that changes everything. So second, we need to admit that we are servants. We are not worthy to untie the thong of His sandals. We are servants who stand in line in this place to meet Jesus in the bread and the wine, offering us a life we can find no place else, a life of forgiveness and new life in Christ. And then He sends us out in the world to reflect that life as forgiven sinners to others. Jesus is the light in our darkness. He is the gift we cannot live without. We can either hide the light of Christ in our lives or reflect it. The choice is yours. Amen.